This is going to be a casual walkthrough on the steps that I took for integrating the T-Rex into the live footage from my short same day delivery. Now I'm only going to cover the shots that didn't involve exporting a 3D camera into my 3D software. So we're going to keep it as basic as possible so it's less intimidating. This process will only work for shots where the real camera doesn't move in the Z-axis. So basically you're not moving the camera forward or back. This is the shot we'll be looking at. Now for this walkthrough, I'm just going to use a simple object instead of the T-Rex just to keep it easy. So some big picture stuff. I'm going to start with my editing software, Adobe Premiere. Make a dynamic link with my compositing software, which is Adobe After Effects. And in After Effects, I'm going to use my 3D content from Maya, which is the 3D software that I'm using. Having all your editing done before you even think about special effects, in my opinion, is the best way to go because it avoids doing special effects or 3D stuff on frames that you might not even end up using. So it just avoids wasted effort. Let's get started with our sample project. So we'll open Adobe Premiere and create a new project. And then we'll import our footage. And let's bring our footage into our timeline and do appropriate editing as required. So then you can imagine you have all your editing done. So you have all the clips before, all the clips after. You have an idea of the pacing for your final film. So now let's do a dynamic link to Adobe After Effects for our relevant clip. So we'll select the clip, right click, select Replace with After Effects Composition. And this will open Adobe After Effects. We'll save the Adobe After Effects file. And we'll reduce the preview quality down to a quarter just to speed things up. So now what we need to do is figure out how many frames we have in this clip because this will be relevant information when working in Maya. So we'll scrub all the way to the end of the clip. And in the left corner here, this tells you how many frames we have. We have 178 frames. Now if you don't see the frames here, go to File, Project Settings, Time Display Style and make sure Frames is selected. With regards to the frames, we always want to round up to give ourselves some wiggle room. So we'll call this 180 frames and we'll save an exit out of After Effects and Adobe Premiere. Okay, so here we are in Maya. The first thing we need to do is set up our scene. So we're gonna create a ground plane. The next thing we're gonna do is create a cube, which will be the stand-in for the T-Rex. And now let's add some color through our hypershade. And let's create a camera. And we'll just rename the camera to hallway. And we'll adjust the focal length to 50 millimeter because that's what I was using the day of shoot. And let's set up our layout under panels. We'll go layouts. We'll go two side by side. On the left, I want my hallway camera. And on the right, I want my perspective camera. On my hallway camera, I'm going to go to view, camera settings, and I'm going to turn on my resolution gate. And then I'm going to adjust the image size. To do that, I'll go up to render settings, clicking this button here. Scroll down and we'll set it to full 1080 HD. And let's load up our reference image in our hallway camera. So we'll go view, image plane, import image. And there it is. We're going to make the ground plane slightly transparent under the material attributes. And now what we're going to do is line up the camera in its position and rotation to match the scene. And then we can adjust the objects as required. So everything looks lined up pretty well. We'll turn off the transparency on the ground plane. Alright, now what we need to do is set up the lighting. So what we want to do is replicate the lighting of the actual scene itself. So what we have in the scene is a ceiling light behind the box. We have a window emitting natural light coming from behind the camera. And then we have light bouncing off the walls on each side of the box. So we'll create a light. We'll just use a point light. And under Attribute, we'll turn off Emit Specular, just to make it generic. We'll make this a cool color so it replicates the ceiling light. And we'll adjust the intensity. 
and we can duplicate this light for the window light and we can warm up the color and lower the intensity slightly and we can duplicate this one again and we can set these up as bounce lights off the walls and there we have it we have our ceiling light we have our window light and then we have the bounce lights on each side now what we need to do is go to our primary light which will be our ceiling light and we're going to turn on emit specular and go down to shadows and select use ray trace shadows alright now what we're going to do is a render test so we'll start with our render setting we're going to select mental ray make sure we have our hallway camera selected and under render options we're going to turn off enable default light under indirect lighting we're going to make sure we select final gathering we can close that make sure we have our hallway camera selected and we'll do a render test okay so now what we need to do is make the ground plane invisible but make it catch shadows only so we need to make it a shadow catcher we do that through the hypershade so we'll open up our hypershade and we're going to search for a material called use background we'll create this material and apply it to the ground plane and let's do another test render so something to note is the reflectivity we don't want that and also on the ground plane we have sort of this black or darkened halo around the box itself that's an ambient occlusion and we don't want that either so we need to turn off the reflectivity of the ground plane and the occlusion mask to do that we go through the attributes of the material so we'll turn the reflectivity all the way down and under mental ray, we'll turn occlusion mask all the way down as well. Let's do another test render. So this is the original image, and this is the new image. You can see the reflectivity is gone, and the ambient occlusion is gone as well. Since we're happy with the setup, we'll turn off the background image. So we'll select it. Under display mode, select none. And let's do another test render. So here we have the box. If we look at the alpha, we can also see we have the shadow. So this is exactly what we want and we'll close this okay so now what we're going to do is set up our render layers so we'll go to channel box select render and we have our master render layer we're going to duplicate this twice so right click and copy we'll do it one more time and we're going to rename the copies to beauty and shadows we're going to turn off the master render layer by deselecting the green check mark and we're going to make sure our shadows render layer and our beauty render layer both have green check marks beside them so on the beauty render layer, we want to remove the ground plane shadow catcher. So we'll select the ground plane, right click on our beauty render layer, and remove selected object. Okay, now what we want to do is set up our render passes for our render layers. So we'll go into render settings. Under passes, we're going to create some new render passes by clicking the top button here. We're going to select the beauty pass, the opacity pass, and the shadow pass. Create and close. Now with the beauty layer selected, we want to associate the beauty pass and the opacity pass to the beauty render layer. So we'll associate them with the current render layer. And with the shadow render layer, we want to associate the shadow pass. So the beauty render layer has a beauty and opacity pass, and the shadow render layer has a shadow pass. Alright, let's fine tune the rest of our render settings for a batch render. So we'll go to common. Scroll up to the top. We're going to set up our file name prefix. We'll call it box. For image format, I'm going to use open EXR. You're welcome to use anything with an alpha layer though. So TIFF or PNG will work just fine. And for our naming format, I want name, number, and then extension. Frame range, I want frame 1 to 180. We want to render the hallway camera with the alpha channel. And we want to make sure default light is off. Under quality, we'll choose production quality and under indirect lighting we'll make sure we have final gathering selected so we can minimize the render settings and make sure we have our rendering tab selected we'll go to render and select batch render and we can open up the script editor and watch it do its thing okay our batch render is done so let's close down Maya and jump back into our After Effects composition Okay, so we're back in After Effects. We're going to import our Beauty Render Layer and our Shadow Render Layer EXR image sequences and rename them appropriately. And now what we're going to do with each of the image sequences, 
we're going to reset the frame rate to match the project frame rate of 23.976. So we'll select it, right click, interpret footage, main, and then we can change the frame rate. Same with the shadows. And now what we're going to do is break apart the EXR into the render passes that we selected. The beauty, the opacity, and the shadows passes. So to do that, we'll select the image sequence, go to file, and we're going to use a free plugin called Create Pro EXR Layer Comps. And this is an easy plugin to get, just search the internet. And we'll do the same for the shadows image sequence. And we're going to go in and find the beauty comp, which is this one down here. And we're going to copy it into our main composition. And we'll go ahead and find the shadow comp as well, which is this one down here, and copy that one into our main composition. One more thing that we need to do is copy the opacity image sequence into the shadow comp. And that was under our beauty assembled. So that's this guy here. So we'll select the entire image sequence, copy it, and bring it into our shadow comp. Let's just hide the opacity image sequence. Now you can see the shadows. However, we only want the shadows being cast on the ground, not the shadow of the box itself. So we're going to use the opacity image sequence to track mat the actual box shadow so we only get the ground shadow. So what we want to do is hide the opacity image sequence, select the shadow sequence, and then we're going to go to track mat and select alpha invert matte and that's going to be off the opacity render pass and you can see now that it automatically deletes it. Now you can see around the circumference we have a slight edge that's easily fixed with a simple choker. So we'll search simple choker, apply it to the opacity layer and it will give it a negative value of let's say negative 1.5 and that eliminates that vignette around and we can go back to our main comp. So you can see that the shadow has a slight space between the box and the actual shadow itself due to the choker that we applied. To fix this, just scale down the shadow layer. And now let's get into some basic color correction. Let's start with the box itself. We'll add a desaturation, so effect, color correction, bring down the saturation a little bit. We'll add a curves adjustment. We'll add a fast blur. And we'll add some noise. And then to the shadow layer, we can select that and add a fast blur. The next thing we have to do is motion track the live footage. So with the live footage selected, we'll go animation and we're going to go track in Mocha After Effects. And this will open up Mocha. We'll import the clip and we'll select the X tool and outline the area we want to motion track. And you can just right click to stop setting points. And then we'll select the track forward button and let Mocha do its thing. Okay, now that Mocha is done tracking, we're gonna export tracking data and we're gonna select After Effects transformation data and copy it to the clipboard. Let's downsize Mocha and now we're back in After Effects. So now what we're gonna do is create a null. So we'll go layer, new, null object. And we're going to make sure our time slider is at the very beginning of the workspace. We're going to select the null, go edit, paste. And that'll paste all the tracking information from our clipboard onto the null. Now what we're going to do is go into the null layer, under transform, select anchor point, and turn off the anchor point keying. So we'll click the stopwatch. And we're going to zero out the anchor point. And then we can close the null. We'll hide the null layer. And now what we're going to do is take the beauty and the shadow layers and parent them to the null layer. So under parent, we'll select null for both. And now we can do a preview. And now we can see the cube and its shadow are motion tracked to the live footage. Let's save and shut down Adobe After Effects and jump back into Premiere. And we're back in Premiere. And because of that dynamic link that we created previously, everything has updated in our sequence here. So at this point, we could continue editing if required, do other special effects to other clips, do color correcting, color grading, and start working on our audio. Thank you for watching. Be sure to check out other videos on my channel.